Hello and welcome back to FEW for our first of two annual birthday spectacular events. So we're kicking off tonight with night one, the opening night, which has been known in the past for some uh, more tournament based matches. Obviously, the 2022 event consisted of uh, an inaugural birthday rumble, which was 10 men back then, and of course, a qualifying match then to find that winner's opponent for the following night and then last year uh, the 2023 event was a tag team tournament with obviously the winning tag team uh, going on to night two to face the tag team champions draconic kingdom at the time and tonight we've got at least one qualifying match uh, because tonight obviously as i stated on birthday, uh, birthday spectacular as i stated on sunday night brawl we do have the returning birthday rumble this time we've upped it from 10 to 20. I, I was, can't really do 20 unless I go like that. that, that that's 20. <laughs> uh, so obviously we've got about, I, I believe, 15 of our normal stars taking a part in this. Quite a few factions involved. From what I've been told, they've all said, fuck it, let's just beat this each, each other. Uh, if one of us win, if one of us gets away with the win, then the bruises and the the injuries be worth it for the other ones. And of course we also have five debutantes in that match. So that's gonna be interesting. Some of those are related to those factions as they're happening. I will explain that in the uh, the matches. Uh, then we have the FEW GB Championship on the line in an extreme rules match between the champion Daniel Baxter who's putting the title on the line against Callum Watson, his former friend slash rival, who had incredible matches back in twenty twenty three, which actually at all at war ending in a draw which is pretty interesting and obviously then they finish off their rivalry the following sunday night brawl episode we also have another rivalry match taking place august the returning august after he returned at sunday night brawl taking on the judas of hero code matthew romero uh, that is going to be taking place inside a steel cage uh, since Callum and daniel have got floor to work with uh and so is our main event then management was like okay let's, let's condense this into a steel cage let's make sure the carnage doesn't go too much because these two will just destroy the arena so let's make sure if they're going to destroy each other that they just have a, a small uh ring to do it in uh and then in our main event the undisputed fw women's championship is on the line because, well, the tight obviously the calling yourself that is on the line because both the interim women's championship and the FEW women's championship are on the line in a TLC match. Uh, obviously, I say if you win both belts, then you can technically call yourself undisputed FEW women's championship champion. Sorry, but that won't appear on the screen because you know I'd have to rename both belts and. Pain in the ass. Uh, it just makes sense to stick with the two until you know it's, if they decide going forward that they want to drop one of the belts, then I'll just rename it. Uh, it's easier doing that way. But if they decide to keep the belts, both of them, then I'll just leave them as they are until we have one belt remaining. Of course, as I said, the interim women's champion Amelia taking on the FW women's champion Hayden, her returning match is ending tonight and it's our main event so we're making history tonight with not only our first women's main event at both spectacular but also our first uh women's match taking place on night one so this is gonna be good so without further ado we're gonna get straight into this because the quicker we get into this then you know it's, it's less days then until night two which is also gonna be great which i'll get into in my outro so yeah let's get straight into this and get straight into our birthday Rumble. So yes, obviously we're kicking off our birthday rumble as I just stated uh, in the intro. Obviously those names you saw on the screen are everyone involved in this match. Uh, hopefully that's not the actual order they're in. I presume it just randomizes that and then randomizes them coming out. So Again, simple rules here is 
yeah, uh, you have to throw your opponent over the top rope. They have to land both feet on the ground. Once they do, they are out. Last man standing is the winner. And that last man will earn themselves a shot at the Undisputed FEW Championship next month at Requal. Uh, and we're kicking off with the Greek Giant. He's definitely one of my favourites to win this. It, it, usually, the, it's a it's a mixed feeling being the biggest biggest guy in the ring because you've got that target on your back, but at the same time you're the biggest guy in the fucking ring. You can just pick about two of them up and just yeet them over the top of the ro top ropes. It's but I think he's definitely going to be one of my favourites to go and win this because I mean if he if. He'd probably be hoping the Dragonic Emperor retains because he uh, maybe won that re revenge against him. Because obviously the heartbreaker match they had together. There's a Greek giant competing in his second. No. Did he compete last year? Who's this music belong to? Oh, it's one of our new guys. Asta Farfax, aka Gargantula. And they call him that because he's fucking tall. <laughs> I'm pretty certain he's about seven foot tall. So this is going to be interesting. I mean, it, okay, so I, I was thinking, then, wait, is there a ramp? Because for some reason it looks like he's as tall as the arena. But it's because there's a ramp, and it, I mean, he's still goddamn tall, and he's taller than the Greek giant. Um, anyway, I'm going to just double check on that stat I was stated. Uh, no, this is actually the Greek giant's debut. Yes, it would be, because Aaron and Drake competed as part of Villain Code uh, last year in that, obviously, tag team tournament. Well, this is going to be an interesting start to the match. Two of the biggest competitors in this company. Actually, I think they are the two biggest competitors. I mean, look at the tearing size of Gargantula. But fucking Great Giant does not give a shit. He's, he's, probably, he's probably running for his mind. I'm the biggest guy in this company. You're not coming in and taking my spotlight. But Gargantula is fighting back here. But the Great Giant just says no. And then gets shoulder tackled to the grid. I mean, we've already got our first competitor coming in. And I feel sorry for whoever this is going to be. Because this is two huge guys. And that music belongs to Hell's Warrior. And that's a choke slab from the Greek Giant. Yeah, it is Hell's Warrior. Obviously, I apologise for... Oh, Will Barrow slams him down. And Hell's Warrior just says, fuck this. Let's just get straight into this. And the clothesline is the Greek Giant. And then tries to take his leg from underneath him. And then kind of gets taken out by both of them in the process. But yes, uh, obviously, there should be some graphics on the screen. But for some reason, it just did not want to work for this match. Down goes. Okay, then Straight to Hell's Warriors path. Uh, that should be one of the Paranormal Life members. And that is Darren of Paranormal Life. The big man of, of that uh, group. And Gargantula is trying to get rid of him straight away. Big Giant sitting back and watching this take place. But yeah, obviously there's a few issues. Obviously there's no highlights in most of these matches. Because again, they wouldn't work. So, Hell's Warriors turning his attention here to Darren. Gargantula is going to have the top rope, but he's not out. And that Caribbean style music... It is none other than our resident pirate. It is Jeff. So that is multiple debutants tonight. All four of these, all four, all five of these men in the ring. Jeff have missed that badly. Then after Greek Giants and Gargantuan, and then close lines. Hell's Warrior. All five of these men in the moment. 
Face first. Ooh. Uh, are making their debuts tonight at Virtus Spectacular. Obviously, not their debuts in the company, just at this show. None of them have competed. And that is another Villain Code member. Who's it going to be? Okay, so that there is Edgar Larson, the brother of Drake Larson. Uh, and the newest member of Villain Code. With Gargantulan is just about staying in this. Jeff takes it, Hell's Warrior. It's another L for the Hell's Warrior. Egg. <laughs> Edgar was trying to take out his partner, the Greek Joe, and Greek Joe said, No, you're not coming into this group and just taking me out instantly. That is another villain code member. It'd be funny if it's his brother. Don't go say uh, Gargantuan, but it's not, it's Aaron, the leader of villain code. So that's most of the villain code in this fight already. So in terms of factions, I mean, they're at a disadvantage right now. Oh, close on to the back of the head. From Edgar to Jeff. And Greek Giant's going to take out his own partner here. Down he goes. And he's saying no showboat in here. And that should be a Delta Stripe member. A faction that's currently kind of pissed off with Villain Code. Minotaur's Maze. And that was Ivan of Delta Strike, the leader. Oh, there goes Jeff. Power bombs him with a weird maneuver. We have not had an elimination since Hell's Warrior went out. Edgar takes out Aaron. And that is Marcus Cross. I could just about see him then. Edgar turns attention to Gargantulan. Big giant was going to have to Ivan. It turns, both members turned their attention to Marcus Cross there. Darren took out Aaron and he's taking out Marcus Cross. Big giant just slamming Edgar around. Must be an initiation with villain code. Darren just kicks Gargantan out the match. And he's won the big men gone. Then runs and slams Jeff to the ground. He's got Aaron up and he drops Aaron down. And then gets taken in himself by Ivan. No, he gets dragged into the corner at least because Jeff just took down Ivan. And Greek Giant just bumped Edgar to the ground and then walked all over him. And now it's time for Marcus to do the same. Just about the walking all over. Darren just stays in this. Belly to belly suplex. It's a suplex of it's just a belly to belly. Raking at the back of the Greek joint there. Edgar's just a bit staying in this. I think that's one of our debutantes. It is. That is Jean Pierre. The bard, he likes to call himself. Aaron's looking to take down Jeff, but Jeff stays in. Jeff fights back out of this. Big Giant just dropped Darren. Jumpy Air has got dropped by Edgar. Marcus Cross is after Ivan. These matches are just chaotic. It's hard to follow at times. It's you want to pick. Oh, spiked his head there. You want you want to you want to pick at least one fight going on, but then there's another fight just drags you in. Like Jumpy Air just. I think just need Jeff in the stomach and then need the Greek Giants. Face first. Jeff sends Marcus Cross. Edgar just took down his leader, Aaron, as well. Looking to end this, but Aaron fights out of it. Close line from Jean Pierre. Right fist from Ivan. Edgar's fighting back here. Marcus Cross is fighting back against Ivan. Jeff gets sent over the top but stays in this because the Greek giant is attacks instead. And there he goes again. With the Minotaur's maze. 
And there goes Jean-Pierre. Face first. I mean, at the moment, Ivan and Aaron are the only... Oh! What a frog splash that was. Five stars easily. Oh, there goes Edgar, thanks to Greek Giants. And Jeff says to Darren, bye-bye. So Darren and Aaron, really. The, Darren, Aaron, and Ivan were the only ones with experience. Obviously, Ivan and Aaron, and the two leaders of their factions, the only two of experience at Birth Spectacular. But both have taken L's. Power bomb. Pulls him back and lets the power bomb take itself. Jeff pulls him back. And Marcus Crossus gets sent out by Greek Giant, who takes out another one. And a famous uh, Jeff, who's going up. And then misses completely. And that there is another new signing. That's a super kick. Nice little super kick there. That there's another new signing. That is Eduardo. So we had just passed the 10 mark. I forgot to say that with Jean Pierre come out. DDT. Great job from Ivan. That is Eduardo of Delta Strike. Their newest member. And Aaron just goes straight at him. Ivan takes down Jeff here. And this is another new guy. You can tell by a lot. Of, I can tell a lot of times by some of the music if it's new or not. And that there is Dorogak. It's a bit of a nutcase. Oh. Eduardo taking the fight to everyone he can see. Including Ivan. Aaron's just turned his attention to his own partner there. Dorogat gets dropped by Jeff. Is this on the line now? But it's Tobias with a new theme song. And I think that was Eduardo just got taken out there. Ivan drops Jeff. And yet, Eduardo very quickly in, very quickly out. And Tobias takes out my favourite, the Greek Giant. Uh, i trying to pick a favourite now. Aaron just taking out Tobias there because he's thinking, hold on. He took, out my fr he took out one of my members. Ivan has missed the knee there. And that there is another Delta Strike member. And it is Alexander this time. The Dorogak against Aaron. Alexander versus Jeff. And Ivan's taking a breather. And Jeff's currently hanging in there. Is he staying in? Yeah, he stays in there. I just missed that. Tobias got taken out. I was too busy trying to find names for... And everything, so Tobias has got taken out. That big kick from Alexander. I did not see who took him out. It's the chaotic from these matches. It's hard to focus on different things. You've got to focus on one side of the ring and the other side someone's getting taken out. And this here is Victor, the other member of Panama Life. Taking out Alexander. And a wheelbarrow S power bomb from. Jeff takes down Aaron, but Dorogak takes down Jeff. And Victor's currently on Dorogak's arm. Both, I was about to say, then both members of uh, Delta Strike have a little breather there. Drop kick from Jeff to Aaron. Still trying to pick my favourite. Alexander and Ivan are good shouts. And that there is one of the mystery men, and it is Fernandez. They hadn't said which one was going to take the match. They drew, must have, I think they're guessing they drew straws. Jeff went to take out Aaron then, but Aaron just about stays in. He holds on for his dear life there as Alexander just drops Ivan and Fernandez takes out Dorogak. Jeff took out Victor before Fernandez goes after him. He went to use the ropes then, but Dorogak got in the way. And he just choke slammed him onto his knee. And he's going. Alexander went for him, but he fought back there. Drops him. And that. Should be the last member of Villain Code making their way to the ring. It is. Just as Aaron got taken down, Drake makes his appearance. Powerbomb there against Alexander. Drake, mate. 
his uh, appearance there. And there goes Victor. He's powering my life both out now. Fernandez takes out Drake there. Alexander's got Jeff up and drops him back down. Big super kick to the back of Alexander's head there. Using the ropes this time he can get it. And he lands that kick to the back of the head. Ivan Drake. Duking out right now. Drake with a punch there. Drake with another punch. Drake just knocked Ivan out. And Alexander just took out Fernandez. And now he's turned his attention to Dory Gatterford going straight after Drake. But Drake just says no. Well, it's free, just kind of taking a breather. And then Drake's just taking down Alexander. Dorogak and Jeff having a go here. And that should be the last member of Delta Strike making their way now. It should be Morgan. It is. I'm going to say now, my favourite is between Morgan and Drake. They both put in a hell of a performance. Oh, there goes Aaron. They both put a hell of a performance in at uh, Proving Ground last month. So those two are definitely my top two choices. Jeff just took out Drake. Oh, a bit of teamwork here. A bit of villain code teamwork against Del Strike. Have they got him? No, he stays in this. And that should be Jeremy. Yes, it is. His brother is competing tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. A uh, night two, sorry. And he just spikes Aaron. And then dodges the wheelbarrow. And in u almost unison, Dorogak and Alexander are taken out by Drake and Morgan. And Jeremy's trying to take advantage here on Morgan's fight with Aaron. So we're down to one member of Delta Strike now. That was pretty, pretty cool that was then from both of them. And this is our last man entering now, number 20, Ian. Oh, belly to belly's over the top, there he goes. Uh, and he lands, uh, attempted a pe Pele kick, worked either way, but Jeremy just got taken about Ian. I will say, obviously, James won from the number nine at a 10 position. Uh, so, I mean, Jeremy is currently in that last but one position. But I feel like the light... Oh, bit of teamwork then for Morgan and Ian. And then carried it on there. Well done. And then Morgan just takes him out instantly. Uh, so, obviously, the later you are, the, the better chance you have here. Morgan gets rid of Aaron. So, we're down to one member of both. Delta Strike and Villain Code. And then we also have Jeremy... Ian and Jeff. Jeff is still in this. I think Jeff went to he, his good old 619 there, but got caught. Well, kind of threw him into his opponent instead. Greg trying to take it. Jeremy, and he does! He rocks him with that right fist, just like he did with Ivan. Oh, I went to take it. Jeff there, but Jeff fought back. Why is Jeff going to the corner where there's someone already is? What a moron. That's all I will say. But he has been this the longest, so I'll give him benefit of the doubt. I mean, Jeff came in at number five. We're currently... This is the last four. The Drake and Jeff in the corner, and Morgan just drops Ian. And Drake just turned his attention to Morgan, but Morgan was a lot quicker. And while these two are taking a breather, Morgan is trying to take out Drake. Drake stays in this fight. He's just wailing away at Morgan. These two don't like each other at the moment. Especially after that loss. So, I mean, Morgan pretty much had a chance to win. And Drake sport it. By drop kicking him. And then losing himself. And Morgan's got a submission locked in on Ian, which doesn't really matter. But you can probably say the more you weigh down your opponent, the better chance you have. And Ian's fighting back. Well, Drake's in his hand. Oh, code breaker. Drake's having his hand stamped on his back, kicked by Jeff. And it, yeah, it kind of had a submission himself, locked him, but not fully. What's Ian up to? Fail attempt at trying to do a 
I'm not sure what that fucking was attempting to do. I think it was a senton. Jeff drops Drake on the face there. Went after Morgan, but Morgan already had Ian in his sights. Jeff sends Morgan over the top rope. And a drop kick from Drake to Ian. Jeff turned his attention. Instead of going after Morgan, which is a smart thing, he turned his attention to Ian and dropped him as another one of those wheelbarrows he keeps doing. Hollering at the crater. And what a, the leap of that drop kick there from Drake. Who does it again? But that could have cost him next. Morgan pulls him back. Just sent into the corner here. Two are taking the breather here. Jeff's trying to take it. Morgan. Ian's getting back to his feet now. Going to turn his attention to Drake while this is going down. Morgan fights back. Jeff has still got the advantage here and drops Morgan on his back here. Drake kicks uh, Ian in the face there. And Jeff going all the way around. I've gone dizzy from saying from watching that. And he gets the revenge of the drop kick, but Jeff stays on his feet. Jeff just stayed on his feet. Like that drop kick did not phase him. Big kick from Ian on Jeff as he takes down Morgan. And he just took down Drake. What a manoeuvre that was from uh, Ian then. Going for the back-to-back -back suplex here. He's got it locked in as well, which is great. But that, obviously, as soon as he let go, Jeff was there in wait. So we currently have our number five entrance, Jeff. Our number 18 entrance, Morgan. And our number 20 entrance, Ian. So, really, oh, he's going for it again. Doesn't do anything again. But Jeff does take down Morgan again. But Morgan fighting back, spins the leg, drops him down. Ian, belly to belly, and he lands that power bomb. Well, sorry, a uh, spine buster. It's like a belly to belly spine buster. Not most spine buster, belly to belly. Don't even talk about Tom. Let's go, go back to bed. That's what I'll say. Let's go back to bed. <laughs> He's in the corner. Ian's trying to get rid of Morgan right now. Jeff's just watching this happen. Because as soon as either one of the nation takes place or it fights back, he's there ready to drop the boot. He fights back Morgan. See what I mean? He's got him in a powerbomb position here. But Ian's fighting back. Look at the sweat on uh, Morgan's head currently. Ian sends Morgan into the ropes and Morgan kind of goes back to back but oh he's got him up drops him down on his head I believe that's the, that was a dimensional shift I think it was Morgan spit god damn why did I keep going so quick my, 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 my eyes aren't built for that level of quickness Ian goes down there and Morgan turns attention to stomping Jeff in the corner I mean, the smart thing here from play either of these is get rid of uh, the other later competitor and just leave uh, Jeff in there because Jeff is got to be knackered. He's staying there the longest. Got to be a record here. And Ian just takes out Morgan instead of going after Jeff, uh, letting Morgan take out Jeff. Jeff goes over the top rope. And a shoulder tackle means we are down to two. Either Ian Parker... Or Morgan Jones will earn that undisputed title shot, which I'm being told is taking place at Recall, but it's 50 50 on that. Uh, depends on how the. Well, I would say depends on the undisputed match on night two, if there's a rematch, if there's a second shot. I'm not unsure yet. So there's a good chance it's. At the moment, it's taking place at Recall. And Ian just throws out Morgan, and Ian earned himself. The victory and earned himself that title shot so he becomes the second person ever to win a birthday rumble so he follows in james's footsteps and he follows in a similar footstep in terms of becoming one of the later ones coming out and obviously in his case it's the last competitor to come out so very good win for ian there and now we're going to be moving on to our extreme rules match the fwgp championship callum and daniel baxter I say after Callum turned on Daniel by just bumping him in the back of the head, uh, but, uh, uh, 
Both spectacular. We were both spectacular at uh, Sunday Night Brawl on our last show. Obviously, there's a bit of beef and a bit of jealousy at the moment. And I'm watching all gold as always. We're looking to get the GB Championship, which obviously would be his first championship in FEW, having competed for the Undisputed title at Heartbreaker in 2022, uh, 2023. Sorry. Um, he also competed, obviously, for the DKE Championship at Night of Scares. No, no. Collision Course. Night of Scares from Mox Cross. Uh, so he completed a collision course. He also completed at. My mindset is uh, working here. I'm trying to remember me fucking own me own stats. Here comes Daniel Baxter. While he's coming out, I'll I'll work out real quick. Uh, no collision course was. Yes, it was. Ignore me. Uh, Christmas Brawl and at Rebirth was in Callum Watson to compete for the DK Championship. Collision course was uh, Marcus Cross, because obviously Marcus Cross competed at both. Collision course Diddy and Night of Scares, yes, because Final Conflict was Darren. My mind is, is just trying to work, work everything out here. Uh, of course, both these two debuted, had their birth spectacular debut last year in a tag team. And they, I've, obviously after that little feud, obviously this is before their feud, they're having some decent matches, management needing another team, they threw them together. Um, though they weren't really picking up wins heavily, they were doing well in these matches to the extent I imagine like, okay, maybe we put you two together, maybe that helps you. I mean, they put, Do uh, obviously, Doom was a very makeshift team with Samuel Seif and Old Man Bob, and they went on to win uh, both their first match as a tag team, which then got them into a following match the same night where they won, obviously, the uh, tag team titles. Yeah, they lost on the fol following, uh, but uh, Keep going to say both spectacular. They're following Sunday Night Brawl, but they did go on to beat win them back at uh, Final Co uh, Final Conflict, which obviously was their last two on two tag team match. Their last obviously tag team match being Collision Course, uh, just two months later. Or injuries meant Scythe was out of action for months, and Oman Bob was out of action till the new year. This match here is, uh, I wouldn't really say personal, personal between these two. It's more of the case of Baxter did. Oh, Baxter gonna take it in there. Baxter didn't like getting take, uh, taken out by who he thought was his friend after that little rivalry. Um, but Callum obviously is more of a jealousy angle with Callum right now because he's realised. His friend's gone on to success while he's just keeps picking up those losses and he's just getting thumped into the ground. Those hooks there from Baxter, who's trying to get the crowd behind him. He knows when he gets the crowd behind him, he wins a lot. Leapfrog's over. Ducks under. Uppercut, a running uppercut there from uh, Callum. He's eyeing up a German suplex here. And he delays it. A delayed German there. And he came to one, that was. Yeah, so, oh, he's got him up. Using the head there. And just drops him as high as he can. Backflip. Daniel's in the smart thing. He's rolling out. But I was going to say it means nothing because obviously there's no count out. So. Callum can easily come out and just take you down. And then Callum misses his attempt at going over the top rope very badly. But then does drop him. So, oh, he's going for a weapon. First weapon attempt. And it is a sledgehammer. And he straight in the gut of Daniel. That's gotta hurt. And it's strange the spine. 
Daniel managed to cater out of it. It drops under DDT. Big DDT. Onto the mat there. He might be thinking of a power bomb. Does. He lands a power bomb as well. Getting him back to his feet right now. Sending him back in the ring. Because though it's extreme rules, and though every single rule is out the window, the rule of pinning or submitting in the ring is still a factor. And he's using that strength. Oh, he's going for it again. Going on his shoulder. Runs him into the turnbuckles. Calm count is the third attempt there, though. Of a punch. Sorry. And sends him over the top rope. I think he's taking a little breather there. He does look a bit knackered. I mean, he's going around in his golden armor. I think eventually, Tyler kicks in. He's going for another weapon here. And he's got a, uh, a bin. Throws it down, though. Doesn't really bother going for it. But he's it, still got the advantage. And he lands that uh, leaping kick there. Uh, crowd have started to get a bit of a mixed response from him. There's a mixture of cheers, but there's a lot of boozing. Face first, he goes into the post, ring post. That's got to hurt. So, with his armor as well, Daniel's getting a weapon now. He's got a chair, but Cam, again, one step ahead, stops the chair attempt and sends Daniel back in the ring and goes into the ring himself. Kendo stick time. But a flying Jaguar. Means he doesn't have that kendo stick anymore. DDT. Flexing those muscles. And it may have just cost him. Because I think Callum is eyeing a power bomb, but Daniel Baxter does what Cam couldn't do earlier, and that is counter the power bomb. He's got his legs up there. Drops him over the knee. That neck has got to be sore at the moment from Callum. Sends him into the steel steps as well. This, these two are just having, just destroying each other right now. Up, oh, we got a ta is a table finally involved. Daniel clears off uh, the second and ends the table, but changes his mind and goes for the, under the ring instead. I guess a ladder. Did not expect that. I'm not in a bit of a power bomb here. But this time, Callum does fight back out the power bomb. And he's first to react. And he sends Daniel into that corner of the table. we got in mind here. Oh, German suplex. We saw Morgan hit one of these. In that rumble just. Third one. Hands were interlocked, which means... Was not letting go of that. Was going to land all three of them unless Daniel was able to, would, have, would have broke that grip. And it was holding his head there. Cam's going for a pin. One. No, that's champ. Champ stays in this. They both dish, dished about an equal amount of punishment, but the st champ stays. Oh, that was a choke slam. I think it was. It kind of two kick out from Daniel. It looked like a choke slam. It looked like he got him up and just let go and let him fall on him by himself. He's telling him to get back to his feet now. Cross body he goes. Another pinfall attempt. One, two, kick it again from Daniel Baxter. He's just about to stay in this fight. Own up the kick and he drop kicks him in the head. Going back under the ring. What's he after now? And we've got another table involved. Because this time, instead of the announced table, it is the actual one from under the ring. Daniel went for a... Uh, oh! Cam drags him out of the ring. I was going to say, Daniel went for a baseball slide. Cam just a bit dodged it, and he's dragged him straight out. And he's got a delayed German suplex. Yes, he does. I was about to say, he had one on his mind there, and he does land it perfectly. It stomps him on the back of the neck, it looked like there. Got him up. Slams him down for a running power slam. Ca 
He went to throw Daniel back in the ring then to get the advantage, but Daniel fought back out of it. Cam's still got the advantage here. Leapfrog's over. Drops under. I think he might went for a belly to belly attempt there, but got countered by Daniel, but he lands that net breaker instead. Kicked in the gut. Knocks him off his feet. You got in mind here. Elbow drop. One. Two. Daniel again just about stays in this fight. He's rolling out the ring here. Cam's roaring him to get back to his feet. He wants to try and land this dive this time. And that time he does. Lands it perfectly. 10 out of 10 from me. I don't know what he was debating then. I think he was debating if to use the weapon or not. Chose instead to run around and stomp on Daniel's foot. Drops him over the knees again. I mean, he's, deba he's debating, do I get the weapon or not? But he's got the opportunity to stamp away, and I think he's just busted open Daniel's face. And he's just taunting his opponent there by just rolling up the fans. Backflip there. Try to see. Interlocking those German suplexes again. Try to see if the face, if you can see the blood. He I definitely think he busted him open. Yes, he has over the eye. You can see it. Must be just cut right above the eye. He's still debating, do I get a weapon or not? And he's... I, th I think he's torn if to hurt. Because though he's kind of jealously... Atta jealous and of his friend and he's obviously attacked him. I think he's still fighting the urges not to use a weapon. He just wants... And he wants to finish this this way instead. Oh, Daniel Fowler is back though. Sends Callum back into the ring. Daniel's going where he wants him. Straight over the knee goes the neck, of Callum. Daniel stomping away now. You got in store here. Oh, there's a submission attempt by the look of it. A bit of animalistic instinct there. Locked in a submission, but locked it in the wrong place, really. If he was going to lock that, he needed to lock it in inside the ring rather than outside there. Don't know what he's doing there. He's just running over the uh, ladders. Oh, the ladders, the steps. The ladders are there, but they're just to the side. Chops away in a punch and a kick. Callum doing the same, but this time he actually meant something. Daniel fights back out of that. Sends him. Gut first into those steps. You think having armor would protect you, but it probably makes it just as worse because though it's protecting the impact, it's still you still feel it afterwards. What's Daniel up to here? Taking a little walk. I think he's trying to catch his breath a bit. Callum's the full, full sprint around the ring trying to catch up. <laughs> and he does. And Daniel like back the way he came. Submission of his own locked in here. Again, I'm not sure why they're locking the submissions in outside the ring. This is not false count anywhere rules. Match must com be contested inside the ring. Daniel doing the smart thing here, taking Callum back in. That could cost him because Callum's back to his feet. Yeah, I thought it would cost him. He's got him up. 
believe that's the renaissance. One. Two. Kick out. Daniel survives again. Look at this. Look at this replay. Drops him there. Cam's still in control though. And Daniel has managed to clear that blood away from him there. Blow him up. Drops him over the knee again. The Jag. One, two, three. Daniel retains. I need to edit that because I put the wrong music on. Daniel retains there. And he's still the FEWGB champion. He's cleaned the blood away, thankfully. Hopefully it wasn't too bad of a cut and get it sorted later. But congratulations, Daniel, on retaining your GB championship on the grandest stage of them all. And now it's time for that steel cage match between Matthew Romero, the Judas of Hero Code, and August Rockwell. It should be Matthew first. Yes, it is. Maybe off at the audience as usual. Got a bit of momentum behind him at the moment. After following that attack on August uh, at Heartbreaker, after that he got some. He got a bit of momentum behind him. I mean, he's beaten Max on Sunday Night Brawl. Uh, he beat Tobias on Sunday Night Brawl, and he beat an injured. Uh, Nick on, on uh, at Proving Ground last month. Obviously, Max is still slightly injured. Hopefully, he should be back in the next few weeks. Obviously, as we saw, Tobias was fine. Thanks to Nick. But Nick took the, pro the, the full force of Matt at uh, Proving Ground. And obviously, he got himself slightly injured. So, obviously, he's out for a good couple of months. And... Here comes August. He's bringing back that old theme song. The song that he started with before, obviously. He switched to the Hero Code music, but with Hero Code No More. August is going solo. As I said on Sunday Night Brawl, he's jacked up to hell for this match. Obviously, Matthew was about to fight. I think it was Gabriel. Um, and then before he even got to the ring, August struck, beat him down. Refs got involved. Uh, so Ref got security involved. They dragged him apart. Matthew continued on with the fight. Bit, won the match. But then August came out. Said he wants some more. Two brawled on this match. Got officially confirmed. Well, this is a big, big match for these two. August needs the win after what Matthew's done, after the amount of wins Matthew's taken. But Matthew needs to continue this momentum. He needs to beat August uh, tonight, realistically. He needs to put an end to Hero Code once and for all. But August needs that revenge. And Matthew with a drop kick early on. Obviously, normal still cage rules. Uh, you can climb out as well as pinfall and submissions, but this one is only pinfall and submission, and he just bopped him in the face. August kicked back there. Elbow to the back. This is personal between these two. Revenge is on the mind of August. And just pure annihilation is on the mind of Matthew. August has him up. The strength here of August. He's saying, yeah, well, look at this. Drops him. Well, deadlifts him there. Just deadlift him off the ground and slammed him down. Running power slam there. Throws him across the ring. There's a lot of 
is is a shown his strength here. Matthews is getting absolutely obliterated currently by August. The power bomb there. He's flexing those muscles, and you can see why, because he's jacked to hell. I mean, you don't really get you didn't really get to see that with the old ele element suit on. Matthew fights out of it though. Using the ropes. Drop kick to the look like the throat. Going for a pin quickly here. Yeah. One. Not enough there. One one drop kick wasn't enough. Oh. I think he, I can't tell if he went for a move or just m pretended to go for one and just mocked him because it didn't obviously uh, land. I, 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 that. It just drops him there though. Face first. I don't know what Matthew was up to with that obviously attempted flip. I think he went for the flip. August moved and he kind of made it look like, oh, I wasn't going for the flip. But again, the strength of August. Takes Matthew down. What's he got planned here? Drags him into the middle of the ring. He's got him up. Oh, drops him over with the shoulder there. Oh, he's, he's got it planned here. He calls this spear elemental. One, two, three. And it was enough to put down the Judas of Hero Code. And August earns himself, himself sorry, and Hero Code, his former friends, some justice tonight. Congratulations, August, on that big win. Matthew cannot be happy with losing that spotlight. This was his moment, and he's just lost it to August, who's now on a two match uh, winning streak at Bird Spectacular. And now it is time for our main event match the TLC match to determine who can call themselves the undisputed FEW Women's Champion, the interim women's champion, Amelia, or the FEW Women's Champion. The queen of FEW herself, Hayden. Yeah, this match is very simple. First person, first woman to climb to the top of the ladder and reclaim the titles is the victor. And first up, we have our interim women's champion making her way to, her way to the ring. So she won the title at Heartbreaker after defeating Jessica Rogue. Then we retain it at Proving Ground that demolition. Jessica Rogue, who currently is nowhere to be seen at the moment. Um, but of course, Hayden is still the women's champion. Her reign was paused at the end of the final conflict. So it, is re it restarted for this. And I'm, I mean, if, you, if you're going to pick one. Yes, the momentum. Oh, but I wouldn't really say momentum behind Amelia because Hayden obviously beats her at something like Brawl. Obviously, if you're looking for experience, you'd choose Hayden. I mean, uh, she's won one both to Declan match, lost one. She's appeared at 15 uh, events, only lost twice. And that was her first two. She hasn't lost since uh, Requal in 2022. At these events, pushed on a 13 match winning streak at these. Stomp away. Whereas Amelia, of course, making her birthday spectacular debut tonight. This is a big moment for her in her career. And she's, she currently has appeared at only five uh, events for us. And she is currently on a free win, two loss situation. Again, her two losses being uh, Jessica Oak in January at Rebirth. And then her other loss being at Final Conflict 2023 against this woman right here. She defeated her in her final match as the Draconic Queen. And obviously she retained the Women's Championship. So Amelia will be looking for that revenge, but not only the loss at Final Conflict last year, but also the loss at Sunday Night Four uh, on Sunday, just gone. She'll be looking for that revenge. 
Whereas Hayden will be looking to get back into the rhythm of competing. This is her, her second match back. So, so you, you'd say the ball is in Hayden's court for the fact that, uh, as I say, she's experienced these events. She's on a big win streak at these events. Uh, she's been at two best spectaculars, won one, lost one. Um, she's been a champion for, uh, if I get the stats up there, she's been a champion for well this I believe this is her 420th day she's defended the title uh, I believe 13 times maybe 12 wait yes yeah, so I think she's defended the title 12 times she defended it on Sunday Night Bra I think she might defend it on Sunday Night Bra actually 12 or 13 times so they say the momentum is in her court that ball is definitely in her court. And obviously, then you can say, you can swap it and say the ball is in Amelia's court because she's been competing every month since Hayden has pretty much gone out of it. Uh, obviously, she competed in the, uh, to, in the tournament to crown this uh, interim women's champion. Uh, she competed, obviously, uh, in the Christmas uh, Battle Royale. She competed at uh, Rebirth, she competed at uh, Heartbreaker and Proving Ground, and of course, multiple Sunday Night Brawl episodes uh, between obviously Hayden and Lee. That, obviously, that match with Hayden and this match with Hayden. So, they said that the ball could be in either one of these courts, so it'd be interesting to see who uses what to their advantage. Obviously, the first ladder is currently in place here, and a spear from Hayden stops Amelia from using that ladder. Mini ducks under. Leapfrog's over. Spins her around. Drops her. I just a, she just about missed that lad there. Remember, obviously, against uh, Jessica Rogue. Uh, heartbreaker, that ladder, when it landed. Obviously, she landed, obviously, Jessica Rogue on the ladder. And that gave her a slight advantage then. Obviously, hit another move to end the match for good. Oh, going to break the arm. She's not careful there. Sends her over. Ducks under. Drop kick. Slaps and a drop kick followed there. As I said in the opening, this is history for FEW. We've made history tonight. Being both the first women's main event at Bert Spectacular. Oh, went for a headbutt there, Hayden did. But Amelia was smart Amelia the way. She used her knees to take out the head there. Okay. I, I, I'm pretty sure I just heard someone in the audience go, Forget about it! <laughs> is, there, is someone actually going to go for this table this time? Head and says, Nope. Bends the head off. The ring instead. But yes, as, as I say, first ever women's main event, Bert Spectacular. First ever women's match taking place uh, on night one. And first ever uh, women's ladder match. But obviously, technically speaking, it's also a TLC match. So the first ever women's TLC match. So this is history making tonight. No matter who walks out with the, uh, the win tonight, they both should be very proud that they've made history. Stomps away. Kick to the spine there. She's probably looking for that coffin drop if she's smart. No, she doesn't. She goes for a splash instead. Hayden's first back to her feet there. And she's clothesline. Second clothesline. Third clothesline. Millie's still up though. She rolls into that corner. Hayden with the elbow there. Takes Millie down to the ground. Pulls her away and lets gravity do its thing. Got a quick drink while this is going down. Let's commentate for yourself while I'm drinking. That was a hair pull there.
believe that was a belly to belly suplex. And that's a frog splash. We've had a couple of them tonight, another five star frog splash. But I'm going to give it 10 out of 10. She's got submission locked in here. Again, these mean nothing because it's a ladder match, but especially Hayden submissions. That one there. Uh, the, who's the boss, she likes to call it. It wears down the legs. And especially with the ha fact that Amelia has to climb the ladder. There's a good chance that she's not going to be able to climb the ladder if her legs aren't working properly. And Hayden essentially mocking Amelia by landing the exact same splash she did earlier and a drop kick. A drop kick. So a big boot drops Amelia to the ground there. Stomping the fingers. Again, smart from Hayden here. She's both working the legs and she's stomping at the fingers. Both miss whatever they're trying to do there. Because again, she can't climb if she, her legs aren't working properly. And she can't climb if her fingers are in pain. So this is smart. I think she was debating to get the other ladder involved there. But she realised we've already got one ladder. Let's see what we've got under the ring instead. We've got a chair. So now it, it, we've had every element of TLC. Trying to take out. Oh, she does. Straight on the noggin there of Amelia. Again, smart. She went for the leg. But Amelia got the second time and then ran straight into a spear. It was a counter to the spear. Which went... And a big boot drops Amelia again. She goes up now. Another five star frog splash. But again, I'm going to up it to a 10 out of 10. Again, the who's the boss is locked in now. You can see the pa yeah, you can see the pain. She's realised, but I, I would say she realises she, she has to tap to get the submission released. But oh, off the knee that was. But Hayden does not have to release that submission. Again, there's no referee involved in this match. Another table here, so she does not have to let go of that submission. So I'm, she, all Amelia has to hope for is that she does. Obviously, in this case, and thankfully, in this case, she did, and she drops her back, back of the head. I think Amelia tried to get out of the way and probably got a bit of a worse off it. She's trying to pull herself back to her feet. Head him with that elbow to the corner instead. Amelia's fighting back now. Slams her down, pulls back the leg and slams down. Close line. Close line again. Spins away and kicks a leg from underneath her. What's a carnage at the moment in this ring? We've got two two tables. We've got a ladder. We've got a chair. We've got another ladder coming now. Hayden's getting the table. The media cares out of it. You better, you're going to move out of the way? Cause that, oh, no. It's, it's, going, it's going to stay standing instead. Hayden's coming low on top of that fallen uh, table as well. An elbow from above. And that has got to hurt as well. Because as I say, she's on the back of that table. Coffin drop. I don't know who got more, uh, who got worse off there. As I say, with her being on the back of the table, obviously you got, you got the metal step, uh, metal steps, the metal legs. Merely moving the ladder out of the way. Turns the tension back to Hayden there. Now you've got the metal legs of the chair, which Hayden, the table, sorry, which Hayden's currently lying on. Coffin drop landed on that, but the coffin drop also landed Amelia on that chair. Co purple. Again, Hayden looks dazed there. She looks really dazed. Oh. That chair just busted it open up. Thank Thanks to Hayden's head there. Oh, that, no, so that's code purple. Got my moves mixed up there. Too many moves to remember in this company. There goes one of the ladders. Table's still there. Amelia's debating what to do. 
I'm gonna lean it up instead. And it's finally getting back to her feet now. And then she gets her hair pulled back. The other table now joins the other corner of the ring. There's two tables in the corner now. Oh. They're duking it out. Chop. Chop away. Punch this time from Hayden. Oh, good old chop from Melee and a punch from Hayden followed. Hayden carried the chop. We were punching a chop of her own. Back and forth this goes. This fight still goes back and forth right now. Oh, a knee from Amelia. Amelia wins that draw. And takes Hayden down. She's got to be happy with herself there. She's got a plan now. Got another chair. She's ch she changed her mind. I think she was looking for something else. Maybe another table. Who knows? There's another table there, Amelia, but... Close lying. Out goes Hayden. Amelia was debating then what to do. Did she go up? Did she just climb out? And she went for the climb out option instead. And she chose to climb back in to attempt to fly... But Hayden sidestepped her. And she's got that chair that Amelia got out to do damage. Amelia's got her again. Another code purple there. Her turn with the chair now. Go for the knees. Turn her attention then to the hand. The first two strikes hit the knee. Hayden's got her up. Face weird glitching there. Drops her down. The bait is to fly then herself. Strikes the knee. Again, who's the boss locked in here? It gets you let's go, despite not having to let go. Got to go. Going for it again. Going for a second one in a row here. Doing some real damage to those legs. Again, Amelia taps. Hayden does the right thing to let her go. She's going up now. Turn it, get back to your feet. Let's do this. Drop kick from a height. Excellent drop kick that was. Pulls a leg and pulls her up across uh, the floor. Amelia counters the second time. I mean, both are going okay. We need to climb that ladder. Drops on the back of my neck. I think both are like, okay, we need to climb the ladder, but at the same time, fuck it, let's just do, let's just, let's just hate each other, let's beat each other up. And that was another code purple to hate him. He had multiple steam purples, and this is a second in a row now. A leg lands on that ladder afterwards as well. Amelia just dominating her opposition right now. Crowd are booing the hell out of her. As she turn, as she went around there, mocked the crowd. They booed her and then she turned back her attention to Hayden. She's getting back to her feet now. Rolls back in the ring. Sends her into the ropes. Ducks under. Leapfrogs over. Drop kick. On point. Media crawl into that corner there for a bit of assistance. But worst place to be, especially with these stomps. Oh, beating it down. Again, I think both realise that they need the ladder, but at the same time, they both realise neither one is going to stay down long enough to get that ladder up, to climb up the ladder. So the smart thing here is just to beat the other one down. 
and then go for it. Stomping at the foot, hand there. She's got in a store here. Nope, she changed her mind, whatever she was going for. She gets mocking and screaming at Melia instead. Here comes another who's the boss. The pain has got to be running for those legs right now for Melia. Pushing that ladder out of the way. There we go. Push, make sure that ladder wasn't in the ring. Make sure there's only one. Clothesline. Pulls her by the hair. Second clothesline. Pulls her back up again. Spins around. Drop kick. Both look tired. But, but as they both realise that they need to destroy the other one if they want to attempt to get that, that ladder. Frog splash. Any other match, and this probably would have been it. But I said this is a ladder match. This needs to take. It, there's only one way to win, and that is to climb that ladder. And Amelia is definitely going to struggle to do that. As another who's the boss is locked in. His legs are really squoze there. Knee to the face. Sends her over the rope. I think she's seen if there's any weapons or anything on the floor and around. But there's not, so. And I think she went for that, that chair, but she realised the chair's busted. Both chairs are dented as hell. So instead, just bounces her head off the ring apron, but. The ladder was there, so she caught her face in the process off the ladder. Sent her into that table. Millie does the exact same. I think she's debating if to do a coffin drop or not. Let's go for the chair table instead. Moves out of the way. I say moves out of the way. Makes it pretty worse for herself. And then that ladder just yeeted itself into the corner. Hayden's got her up here. Slams her down on her back. I say moving that table probably did a, a lot worse. But I can understand why she moved it. Because she opened that floor up a bit more for them to, to battle it out. Do you know what I mean? That wouldn't have been able to happen. Because that table being there. So she did the right thing moving it. But at the same time... She probably did the worst thing there because... Oh, stomp away. Because she just got the table in between them. And it looks like it's cost her a little bit. So Hayden at the moment is in full control. Took a breather there before she got back to her feet. Sends her back into the ring. Rolls back in herself, but Amelia flies across and slightly knocks her out, but not enough to do any damage. As Hayden just drop kicks Amelia on the the counter. Here we go, another table. Picked it up. This gonna put it in the ring there. Yes, she is smart. Counters the punch, but doesn't count the kick. Wall Barrow here. Slams her face first into the mat. I think Amelia was abandoned to put that uh, table up, just like she did with the other ones. Both from the of the ring now. This match is just never ending between these two. They both wanted the damage. Permanent damage by the look of it. For going for the win.
punched him in the back of the net. Both probably making up for the fact that oh, suplex there. Probably making for the fact that the August and Matt match did not last very long. So they're going to make up the time somehow, and that is just by beating each other up for a bit of an extra ten minutes or so. And she's screaming at her, saying, "If you get keep getting back up, I'm going to keep putting you down, and then I'm going for that ladder soon enough." It's just going to be that one moment where the other one puts the other one down. Either it's Hayden puts Amelia down or Amelia puts Hayden down and then they go for the ladder. It just needs to be that one big moment. One that they... Oh, straight face first off the ring post. One that they will judge as this is the moment to shine now. There's enough damage to get up that ladder. Oh, kick to the face. Ducks under, spins round. Seeing purple. And she follows up as always with code purple. Because obviously you see it coming a mile away and she activates the code. She's brushing it off because I think that's pretty wise. She, Amelia hasn't really gone for the ladder yet because obviously she's still trying to oh, drops her back there still trying to get these the legs and the hands to stop hurting from all the uh, your bosses and all the stomps chair shots, kicks you name it, trying to get the, the feeling into every that's why I think she keeps running around she's trying to get the feeling in these legs again uh, whereas obviously every time she's getting that feeling a bit more, Hayden's realising and that's why she's stomping away to make sure, oh, hair pull back there. Make sure she's st still can't climb. So it's just an ever ending cycle of one stomping, one trying to get the movements, and then stomp again. Oh, see what I mean? Kicked it underneath the leg there. And this is called royalty. Again, any other given day, that would have been it. Hayden, of course, utilized that move heavily. Uh, under her run as the Draconic Queen and won her plenty of matches and I'm pretty certain it also won the ma last match uh, these two had at uh, Final Conflict we both know obviously uh, the match at Sunlight Brawl so we all know the match at Sunlight Brawl ended after that slight punch rocked Amelia enough um, but at the same time I think I feel like Amelia for there's no point getting the damage I may as well take the L right now. And I'll go from there. Throws the table over Amelia there. Then kicks the shit away. Kicks that dirt away. I think Amelia will be looking for a co purple in the corner here. Sorry, seeing purple in the corner here. No, she doesn't. She pulls the arm into the rope and just yanks and yanks and yanks. Again, arm wrapped under that rope. Face first on the turnbuckle. Face first again. Chop. Hear the Ric Flair woo in the audience there. That was a woo moment. I'm not going to be high pitched with that because it's too high pitched. Using the ropes to land a double kick to the stomach. Amelia's turn to throw the table on top of Hayden. Throws it again. Code purple. Look at the replay there, it's perfectly hit. Look, it's straight in the head. Again, any other match, that would have been it. And again, the table thrown at Hayden. What's Amelia thinking? Do I throw it again? And she does. She throws it to the side this time. Picks her opponent up instead. Turns Hayden into the corner. Hayden counts out of it. I think she went for a scene purple there, but Hayden's counting out of it. Punches and chops. And a clothesline. 
Second clothesline. He's got the hair again, pulls her up. Ducks under. Spins around. Drop kick. Rolls back from her feet, though. She looked tired for a second there. Amelia's rolling at the ring. What's Hayden thinking here? I think she's finally thinking that this is. And the ladder. We've done this long enough. We're both tired. Let's get the ladder going. What's she got in mind here? She's got the table as well. Oh, I think she went to hit the table off Amelia, but Amelia countered. Sends her into the ladder and bounces off it. Amelia's climbing. She's struggling. She's struggling to climb, but she's climbing. Hayden with the punches here. She's trying to stop her from getting a full grip of that title. Sorry, titles. Take a quick breather. Debating how to get her down because the punches aren't seem to be working. But she's also trying to get some energy back into her because she couldn't get the leaps. She dropped at that time. Trying to get around her, I think. Yes, she does. Go on to that table. Hits her with it. I think she's trying to get her out of the way, so she's thumping her to get her out of the way. Set her up in the corner. Oh, I think Hayden's attempt there was to bounce Amelia off it, but Amelia countered. But Hayden's uh, the counter. Sends her kind of into the rope. She misfired it, and this time she bounces her. Catching her breath a second here. Morphed around that ladder there. For a power bomb for the ladder, for the table. Going for a second one by the look of it. Again, catching her breath momentarily because it's going to take a lot of strength to lift her. Lifts her again. Second power bomb. Table just destroyed. Got her again. Sends her for the. It's going for a trifecta by the look of it. Got her in position. But Amelia counters. And sends her face first into that table. Millie's got to be thinking, maybe I'll do the same. DDT, a delayed DDT. And it, I think it hurt her back. And it's going to hurt her back because... Oh, Hayden's back to her feet first. Close line. Spare of energy there from Hayden. Obviously, it's going to hurt Amelia heavily in the back because of obviously going for these tables and this is going to hurt even more royalty onto the broken piece of the table sends her into the table this should be the trifecta now this should be it this should be the moment she needs power bomb for the table this should be the moment she needed it should be it Trying to get a bit of energy because she's taking the slow climb because she's struggling, but she's hoping it should be enough because of Amelia being down. Amelia's just getting back to her feet now. Amelia's trying to she, I think she went to climb that ladder, but Hayden's done it. Hayden has done it. She can now call herself the undisputed champion because she now claims both the interim women's championship and the FEW women's championship. Congratulations on your attention. Your new title. You're now the champion. And that is it for FEW Bear Spectacular Night 1. Uh, we've obviously had a, a new Rumble winner, a second ever Rumble winner, Ian Parker. Congratulations. Obviously, he has that title match uh, to take place soon. Let me just get the Night 2 stuff up. Uh, obviously, he has the title match that one more likely take place, take place at Requal. Just depends on what goes down on night two. Uh, obviously, Daniel Baxter retaining that FEWGB Championship in that obviously in that Extreme Rules match. August getting the revenge on Matthew in the steel cage, and of course, as you just saw that very long ass TLC match, which Hayden managed to win, claiming to say, but as I said at the end before I got cut off, uh, both the interim women's championship 
and the uh, FAW Women's Championship. So she can now call herself the undisputed champion. Um, so she's both a new, uh, she's continuing this reign, but she's a, it's an all new reign for her, but still under the same part of reign. Uh, as I said, that is, those were some good ass matches. And so now moving on to this Saturday, uh, which is the 27th. Yes, let's get the calendar up then. Uh, for Birthday Spectacular Night 2, the second part to our mega event. Uh, obviously, we've got the FEW Tag Team Championships on the line between Stud Express and Trikonic Empire. They will be kicking off that night. Uh, the DK Championship is on the line in the triple threat match between Steve of Deadly Bros, Demise, the former champion, and the current DK champion, Alex Boyd. That should be interesting. Uh, a new FEW Women's uh, a new FEW Women's Tag Team Champions will be crowned. Uh, I'm not going to spoil again who's in that match just yet. Uh, you'll see it when we get to the show. Uh, most involved are ones obviously on the roster that have teamed up, uh, but we do have a new team, uh, new two, new duo. Uh, joining this uh, ranking. Uh, and then, of course, our main event, the No Holds Barred match for the Undisputed FEW Championship, the Draconic Empire uh, leader, the Draconic Emperor, looking to put down the former Draconic King. Obviously, now just going by his old alter ego, the Dragon King Thomas. Obviously, he'll be looking for some revenge over his former pro uh, protege, uh, after what happened at Final Conflict and Summer Solstice last year. So that is going to be an exciting show with some exciting matches. Uh, three titles uh, on the line and a fourth to find their inaugural champions. So, obviously, thank you for joining the FEW Red Spectacular Night 1. Uh, it's been a blast. You do check out Night 2 this Saturday. And I will say on that as well, obviously, Sunday Night Brawl, I believe it's 15th of May, which is a Sunday. Uh, of course, as I said on... Uh, first, uh, can you guys say first spectacular instead of Sunday Night Brawl? Uh, on the last Sunday Night Brawl, obviously, it's going to be moving onto this channel permanently. Uh, so, obviously, you can check that out. If you don't check out Night 2, you do have uh, Sunday Night Brawl coming to the channel in May. So, obviously, as I say, I hope you enjoyed Night 1. And I hope you stick around for night two because we've got some good matches still to come. So thank you for joining and we'll see you at the next FEW event. See you next time. If you like what you've seen, don't be afraid to uh, throw us a little like and uh, subscribe. That's always very appreciated over here. And uh, well, I'll see you on the next video.